I need the gavel for you, DJ. Hi. Good evening, everyone. We'd like to call our uh, Wednesday, June 12th meeting to order. Thank you, those who are here, those who are joining us uh, um, remotely. Uh, with this and every meeting, we'd like to open up with an invocation. Uh, Brother Thompson, you mind? Let us pray, Heavenly Father. Dear Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for another opportunity to be in the midst of your presence, dear Lord. I pray that the hearts be cleared and the minds be open, Heavenly Father, so that we can do the business of your people. Let thy will be done and not our will be done. Dear Lord, let the unity and the collaboration and the attentiveness of what is going to be done to edify your people be granted this day, Heavenly Father. So bless all those who are here, all those who are listening and all those in attendance that the things that we do will be pleasing in your eyes. So here we are, dear Lord, just a few of your humble and faithful servants, Lord. Use us to do your will. And we ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, if we can repeat the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you, Council Member Thompson. Um, Council, as we move to 4.0, if we can have a motion to approve the agenda, we'll. Move to approve the agenda, Mayor. All right, we'll work off of the screen. We've got a motion by Council Member Harris, a second to approve. Council Member Green. Okay, Council Member Green. Uh, I saw, uh, and then after this, we're going to the monitors, y'all. Uh, uh, any discussion on that? All right, look to you for your votes on the screen. Who are we missing? Thanks, oh. Thanks. Okay, all right, motion carries uh, by those voting 9 0. Uh, item 5.1 uh, revised parking lot. Items. I guess that'll be Mr. Yates. I'll start right. off and I'll ask Mr. Yates to come forward. Um, um, good afternoon, uh, Mayor, members of Council, and want to say good afternoon. Want to say thank you for your input and your guidance as we've moved from the manager's recommended budget to what we hope will be Council's adopted budget with your positive action either today or in, in very near future. Um, getting to this um, process every year. Um, can be at times a challenge, but it's also very exciting because it gives us a chance to work more closely together to understand the wants and needs of the council members and for us to really pull on all the talents of the council members. Some of you who have made impassioned pleas about things that the city committed to doing and we needed to honor, and in cases of some council members as well, they've been able to actually help us identify areas that we might can look for additional efficiencies. As I always tell you, this is not my money, it's not Jeff's money, it's not Kelly's, Adam's, um, Jody's. Um, it is your money and the people's money. And so I want to again say thank you for your um, uh, attention and your guidance as we've moved from what I hope again is going to be the manager's recommended budget um, to the council's adopted budget either today or in the very near future. But looking at the parking lot, we have tried to capture all of the items that we heard from council as well as the additional um, funding that was requested. We have them listed in front of you on in your um, PowerPoint package as well. There are 13 items um, and I'm just going to read these so that we get them in the minutes and I'll do it very quickly and we'll circle back to see if there are any questions that you have. Um, maintaining right-of-way maintenance and litter pickup crews, 500000 Major corridor beautification, $50,000 spot removal and $50,000 contingency for a total of 100000 Item number two. Item three are neighborhood improvements for an additional 50,000. And I do believe that is the neighborhood signs. It is. Just to, for clarity. Um, number four, Office of Community Safety, additional funding of 800,000, which is in addition to the 1.5 that was in the base budget of new funding, which um, my math is not math in a day. I think that takes it up to 2.3. Yes. 2.3. Um, we have five, we have infrastructure developments for 250,000. Are we sure what that is, Jeff? That is the additional funding for water and sewer. It, that was the Johnson Street. We made it a little more generic, 
given that H, um, there's home and CDBG programs in certain areas. So we wanted to be able to have the flexibility to use that funding to help support those programs as well. Oh, oh, wait a minute. So we took the specific targeted uh, area because I think that was the big part of it. Okay. Well, the, the, what I'm saying is, is that it's here, and it's just it, it's here. The 250 is here, and if uh, subject to y'all saying Johnson Street, Helen Street, Kane Road, or Bonnie Dune area, we want to represent that it is here. The 250. Okay. I got you. All so right. we'll come back around and we will say number six was the step plan alignment for years of service with the police department is $1.3 million. Uh, reduction of the MSD uh, proposed tax rate from 0.211 cents to 0.17 cents, 61000 Number eight is additional staffing for development services. We're looking at, I think, two uh, members and we are going to come back to council um, with uh, the details of that um, after the budget is adopted if council approves it One would be focused on code enforcement activities primarily and one would also be looking at efficiencies and customer service enhancements uh, We are looking at a uh, hundred thousand dollars number nine for additional marketing funds We are proposing to fund the FSU entrepreneur and business hub for two hundred fifty thousand dollars That's item ten Item 11 is a downtown hospitality officer for $100,000 to supplement the work that we're already doing downtown, um, as well as 12 is a one-way-in, one-way-out program operationalism. I, I, I got that tongue tied on that one. Once you get it wrong, you can't get it right. As for $375,000 for the upcoming year and 375 for the subsequent year, and then um, probably most important, and we've been able through the efficiencies I discussed at the beginning, is also a reduction of the proposed tax rate from five cents to four cents. All told, the general fund impact is $5.697 million. And if council accepts um, the parking lot items, um, subject to us doing some wordsmithing and clarity, you are again at a balanced budget at a lower tax rate. So I'd be happy to... Lower than, lower, tax, lower than proposed tax rate. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Manager. Council Member Hare. Thank you, you so Thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, going back to item three, item five, and item 11. Okay, starting at item three, um, I do know that we had... Um, it was already targeted at fifty thousand for that. I did request an additional twenty-five to make it fifty to make it seventy-five thousand. Uh, I just think that that's, it. and I continue. I shouldn't have to sell this, but I continue to think that it's really important when the communities have an opportunity for those community signs. And even though it just says neighborhood improvements, <clears throat> I would like for it to be. Pacific that it's for the sign so it can't be retargeted anyway because it's hard anyway to get keep money there for the community and they get so much pride from it and this is their money so that's that's my one item if I could uh, um, councilman real quick just a reminder there's already 25,000 in the budget so this additional 50 would take that program to $75,000 I'll, I'll go with that. I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. But, but that's just to carry over what was not used, the 25. It was all used. I it's believe. all been, it's all been used up. So that's new money. So the 25 that's there is new money, and the 50 proposal is new money. Yes, sir. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Now, if we look at uh, number five, <clears throat> as the mayor alluded to, but I was going to uh, also uh, have some words on it. I specifically myself have been really, really struggling to get to improve the infrastructure in that location that would align with our affordable housing projects. I personally, and I hope it wouldn't be a problem with council, that if we could specifically state, even if you need to keep infrastructure development, but to include the word Johnson Street because that was the proposal. That was my proposal. That's even why it's a line item now with your support uh, for helping me get it there. 
and just explain just for me what uh, 11 fairly means. It's probably just more clarity for me than anyone, please. Absolutely. So in the downtown district, the MSD out of that budget is funded $60,000 for the ambassador program. This would be additional presidents downtown um, through PD to that can, that will do more than what the ambassadors do and will help in that, um, will provide those services in the downtown area, helping and providing a little bit of support and, and law enforcement. And, and yeah, I can so speak to, to you talking about the uh, downtown hospitality office. Hospital, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So basically what it is, probably a few months ago we had, uh, or maybe last budget year, we gave Cool Spring a little extra money to have mm -hmm. what we considered or called ambassadors where if you've been visiting other places, they kind of meet people when they're getting out of their car. They have questions about parking. Um, sometimes right. they may see an incident and they got a, a, a specific connection that they can notify PD that there's an issue. You know, homelessness. A lot of times you ladies are going in and out of these parking decks and a little afraid. But just to see someone with a vest on that, that that's a smiling face. Um, she didn't quite do it that way. Um, she's got people that do functional things that are needed. But she only pays, she's got one full-time and a half position that she pays $15 an hour. And they do stuff like pick up trash and clean out the flower beds. But they're not really what we're talking about. And I knew we were short officers. And so it was, it was to go in, and I think she has some other recommendations about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally in support of it. But the reason that I was kind of uh, even asking anything about it was because I know there were some concerns from the downtown group. And I didn't know if this line item or this additional line item would be in support of what some of their financial concerns that they were talking to us about. That's the reason I brought it. Yeah, in. I think what they relayed the other day was they were, they were mainly concerned with the parking hour adjustment and the tax increase, Right. you know, right, doubling right. the tax increase. So I think they've recommended bringing that down from 21 cents to 17, uh, which so they, they were anticipating some additional. So this um, answers their questions? This helps? It's like I added to it. It wasn't, yeah. You good? All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Council. Council Member Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question is on number two, the corridor beautification. Uh, I think we're talking about the three from the north and the three from the south, whether it is Ramsey Street, Bragg Boulevard, or Murkison Road. I hope the same thing applies to whether it's going to be Camden Road and Stony Point and Rayford Road. But on top of that, if we're doing a corridor beautification, how do we increase the budget for demolition to improve the community beautification? I'm pretty sure that they use up all their money every year. How do we uh, uh, increase that to make sure that they don't, they're not limited, that they can be able to get everything done that they can for that entire year without running out of money? What um, I would, uh, we, we have that number and we will get you the number of what's in the budget. Um, for some reason, I think it was uh, hundred thousand dollars. Whatever the block grant seems. And um, I think we also put some general fund to it as well. But we'll get that. But can we? we so we can legally do that. Yes. Um, uh, but what I'd prefer to do is to um, put that down as our next budget question and get that for you. But what I do know we can do. Well, I'm trying not to have another budget session. Well, no, I'm no, trying no, to. No, no, what, what, what? How we've done and handled this in the past is when we've run out of money, we come back to council. Okay. That's and we are able to do that as well um, in the upcoming year if the budget is adopted. Can you put that in the parking parking lot after yes. we approve the budget? Yes, sir. All right, uh, Councilmember Benavente. I made that clear, didn't I? Thank you, Mayor Colvin. I'm assuming that the far left column is something that you guys are going to discuss at some point. The school resource officers. Yes, sir. I believe that. Um, Adam it's on the working. board. Yes, sir. Adam has been working with the schools and the um, sheriff's office to put together some estimates about what that looks like. So there's some additional, will be some additional discussion about that. Today? Yeah. Okay, so I'll wait until we get to that part in the conversation then to ask my questions about that. Um, city attorney, or excuse me, um, city manager Hewitt, what do you need for us to do today um, on the topic of item number four, um, what do you need to hear from the city council to ensure that uh, it's clear to staff that alternate response ought to be the priority for um, the was, was office? 
part of it or a priority of it? Well, specifically, we've got um, estimates from the uh, state budget and tax office that articulates about a 1.3 to do a pilot program. We've already identified three zones in the city of Fayetteville that have gotten shot spotter. These are places that are most likely to be, um, you know, where the next instance of guns violence uh, occur. One around Smith Rec, one around Massey Hill Rec, one around Cliffdale Rec. Um, with those areas in mind, I think once we do get a director of office community safety, that's very likely to be where we initiate such a pilot program. Um, but again, I'm just trying to understand what you need to hear from us that you get the consensus from council uh, that we do have the intention of using this office to establish and to pilot an alternative response program. Um, I think um, for the council members uh, through consensus or whatever means you'd like to say that that is um, the outcome that you want out of next year's budget if funded. Um, I think all of you know that we have had um, two, may have been three recruitments. We may have tried it on our own before we hired a headhunter uh, recruitments for an Office of Community Safety Director. Part of the challenge that we have had is that um, we can all conceptualize what the Office of Community Safety might do, but having someone who has expertise in alternative response, homelessness, gun, gun violence, violence, violence production, re reduction, mentoring, who is available and not already engaged in another community can be challenging. And um, we've at our last recruitment effort, we had uh, very well qualified people um, from as far away as um, I think it was Washington State or Oregon. But trying to find someone who wasn't overly law enforcement background or someone who was um, a very talented clinician, mental health clinician, but didn't have any experience working with people where they are in the neighborhoods was a challenge. So your point, if the council were to say, we want you to continue to look for an Office of Community Safety Director, but what we're hopeful of in this upcoming year if funded is we would like for you to, in addition to maintaining the current level of services, maybe with current providers or someone else, which one is homelessness, which you've already said that with the Day Resource Center and the contract for, for Manor Church to operate and run that for us, um, we um, and some other activities that the council may be asked to approve throughout the uh, calendar fiscal year. But if we don't have anything on alternative response, if that is something that the council through consensus or direction to the manager and the team says that we are interested in standing that up in some form in those three areas, it's four areas you may have mentioned, then so that would be very helpful. In that case, um, Mayor Colvin, uh, if I can make a motion asking for consensus of council um, at this time, uh, to direct city staff to work towards establishing a pilot alternate response program. All right, just for clarity, um, there's a motion. Is there a second before we go there? Second by, all right, second by Councilman Hunter. So what I recall, um, I think we got the closest to agreement on that uh, as we looked at the data and prioritized what our two main issues were, mental health response, co-response, and gun violence were, were the two. So if, if what you're saying is that there's some language that says that as this budget is allocated, that there are programs that address those two pillars. But I think wh where I'm losing a little bit of, of it is where you say you're going to make that a higher priority than Well, and, and so. I guess I don't want to, yeah, th these are all things that are, you know, competing priorities. I don't think that one is more um, valid than the other. And in fact, I think that alternate response serves gun violence issues because in between those emergency calls, we've got to start uh, educating our communities to realize don't let your conflicts get to the point where you're looking for weapons. You can get help that will not get you in trouble by taking advantage of this office. And I believe that's the true way that we address so gun violence, violence in this community. Intervention. It absolutely is. Um, and, and more so, you know, we've got our, and, and maybe, uh, Assistant City Manager Yates can discuss our cost of gun violence study that's coming back. Part of that study, we've already got cooking. It's going to come with recommendations on how to spend more money on gun violence. And again, we still have more than a million dollars to then feed those types of recommendations and programming. So I think that there is enough here to do both, a yes and situation. And in fact, alternate response, I think, also serves uh, gun violence issues. So, you know, we know 
the three areas in our city that have been identified for shot spotter are that because of gun violence. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's, it's other kinds of violence there too, right. but the reason they got chosen is because of gun violence. So my as- expectation mm-hmm. is that any sort of alternate response is keenly aware that that's what they're there to address. Um, right. It's not they're not there just for mental health. No, I'm tracking. But uh, I guess in the in the, to clarify your motion for me, uh, if the motion is to instruct. The new department, and, and again, here we are building a, pl- a blueprint for a department, you know, at the funding level before we get the, the subject matter expert in to come tell us how to get there. But I'm okay with some very lenient framework to say that we will utilize this allocation of 2.3 uh, to address gun violence. Yes, sir. And code response. Alternate uh, response, which, but yes, yeah, sir. Which, which is what the data says. Those are the That's top right. two. So I'm okay with that, but if it goes further than that, I don't know, it may complicate it for me, but well, I, I so, support the theory. And, of and so I'll, I'll, I'll just clarify further that, you know, City Manager Hewitt, with this budget, obviously we've got to pay our staff. There's got to be a director who's got a salary out of this $2.3 million. In addition to that, we know we're going to get a comprehensive cost of gun violence study that's going to tell us exactly the kinds of um, things that will help our unique situation. And in addition to that, we talked about, we've addressed homelessness, we've addressed some other things. We don't have anything related to alternate response. Let's also feed that baby as well. Um, that so that's, how, about, how about some triggers, council member? Yes, sir. If, let's say we, you know, if council consents and we pass the allocation of the money, which is what this budget means. That's for, right. Then maybe there's some triggers to come back with these plans by a certain point or time. I mean, to, right. to come I, back I, with I, a plan for a gun violence, plan with alternate response uh, along that, that runs parallel with the hiring of a director of course gonna, we're trusting to, to, to build this but that's that's I, one I, I think that's I think that may all make sense to me right. uh, city manager but, Hewitt but I got councilmember Thompson uh, discussion on your motion here thank you mr. mayor mr. mayor I wanted to make sure that we did not put the wagon in front of the horse when we started this process with the 2.3 million dollars I don't think that we should be deciding today on how to move that program forward when today is about the budget. Uh, that might be a work session conversation. And, and, and two, we don't want to do something that's going to augment what the new director intent is because we only have a vague opinion. And you keep talking about the uh, gun safety uh, study. Well, when you made that motion, I asked you to reduce that gun st- safety study from 10 years instead of 20 years. So it's already been a year, so we don't know how long it's going to take to get that study done that we can use some of that data and some of that information to move this program forward. So, so the so study would, looks let, back in time. Well, let me, just, let me just finish. So I agree with what you're saying. I just think that today is not the time for us to make a motion on that. Well, and, and, and obviously to the council members, this is not the first time you guys have heard from me about this. I've reached out to each of you individually and expressed exactly why I think it's incredibly necessary for us to say this up front. We are all the founding fathers of this office. And so when we think about the United States of America, and when you think about what was the founders' intent when they drafted the Constitution, what was the founders' intent, we need to make it clear that the intent of having an office of community safety is to have an alternate response program. I agree. So whether that costs a million dollars, two million dollars, you know, whatever it ends up costing is what's going to cost. And whether we spend that in the next 12 months or if, you know, we have to, we have a unique situation, it might take a little bit longer to get all our pieces in place, it might take longer. But I want to make it clear to our city manager and to any future council, because we, this may not get done in the next 12 months, that we wanted on day one alternate response here in the city of Fayetteville. And I need to, for us to make that clear today. I think we all are in agreement with well, that. Well, then we can make a consensus motion and we can vote. Well, all right. So I have council member here and now Hondros. Okay. <clears throat> so I just want to make sure I'm understanding clarity. Okay. We are still looking for the CEO or whatever Direct. that position mm-hmm. is going to be. And we are building up the budget and making line items under that hierarchy of what that money is going to do or supposed to do. Somewhat in agreement of what Council Member Thompson was just saying. You know, I've, I've, got, I've gotten on support for this item. And I'm wondering if that is the correct order 
I mean, are we supposed, who, who is going to build the, the profile for this particular, I mean, who does that fall under since we don't have the leadership? Is it coming uh, It would be the director of the ACM and the council. Give I, I, think it, I think it would be the council. What director? That we're trying to hire. Right. I mean, they'll execute it. The council will kind of put the framework. That's right. Professional staff. You know, if, when, when we're hiring a new police chief, when we're hiring a new police chief, we make it clear that issues of traffic safety are a priority for the city of Fayetteville. It's very likely they're going to come to that same conclu conclusion on their own. It doesn't hurt for the city council to say that, you know, rewind time before we had uh, Chief Braden and when it was still up in the air, it was up to us to be able to say what we want the next chief to prioritize. We did share that with them. So it is not inappropriate to make that clear on day one, today being day one, that we established this office. Well, so, well, I think I think uh, Councilman, you jump back in in front of I did. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, Mr. Manager. I may need your help. So, we've identified four pillars of OCS. Correct. There was homelessness, gun violence. Is it youth intervention and alternate response, or am I messing it up? It's youth opportunities. Youth which opportunities. Is youth intervention, and a focus on the youth side of that. And it was gun violence, then it was mental health response and alternative response. Right, so in the way of um, Mr. Manager and, and staff, whoever can answer, the, so in the way of homelessness or in the pillar of homelessness, we have some services with the Day Resource Center, correct? correct. And with gun violence, we have sound thinking and or shot spotter and or other things, correct? correct? So with youth opportunities, we have some programs with youth um, I think we had the PAL program and others, isn't that right? Yes, and our parks and recreation as well as, uh, don't forget, um, the PROVE, I think you said. PROVE, yes. okay. So then, what, if anything, are we currently doing with alternate response? At the moment, um, that is not an area that we have. In. So what happens so, to the position that we funded with the uh, social worker? It is a social worker position in the police department, and I don't know that that is filled at the moment. It is not filled. It's vacant right now. Oh. We, we need a, ro a real, some, so... So, so I ask that to ask, I mean, I think it's prudent based on all the comments from all of my colleagues that um, the fact that that's the one pillar that's not um, getting any assistance or having any program to help in that pillar, I think it would be prudent to, um, as we're hiring the OCS director, kind of tell them like that person that, hey, starting from day one, this is something we want you to pay attention to because this is a pillar that's lacking Attention and assistance. Thank you. Well, I think, okay, good, good information, and I and I and I do agree. And uh, some of the things that we had talked about before, um, in addition to just hiring an in-house, I mean, have we looked at what Alliance or, or one of the mental health companies add from an RFP, RFQ? But I think some of those ideas with the execution. So, council member, to use your example, of the police uh, chief, we had a budget meeting that said the police or public safety would get X. Then we came back with the priorities and said, we want you to have this focus. And then we hired somebody to execute. So I think as you're doing this to keep us on budget and, and policy, because part of what you're saying is the policy aspect, keep us on the budget side of that with some policy. Is there a way that you can formulate that and give some guidance that it's clear to him that all of the four pillars need to be addressed and to come back at certain points of times if this money is allocated? So I think, you know, Dino just said it. We've already said all that part. The only thing that we haven't said clearly is alternate response. We've already said yes to homelessness. We've already said yes to gun violence. We've already said yes to um, uh, violence interruption. We haven't said yes so wrap that into to motion. alternate response. So yes, in addition to everything that we've already done inside of the initial recommendation that you made, uh, city manager, in addition to that, we want to make alternate response a pilot program here in the city of Fayetteville. And that is your amended motion? That is my amended motion. Is there still a second to that? All right, I think that clarifies it. Thank you, sir. All right, I'm, I'm fine with that. Any, any other questions, comments on this, council? I did. All right, so uh, we can take a consensus on this. We're still gonna have to clean this parking lot up each, each yes, item, sir. so we're gonna come back and do it all. But it, since you have a motion and a second for a consensus, those in favor, as stated, that the four pillars would be addressed uh, specifically in this allocation. Show a hand. Well, or, well just, just Make sure that you Re heard. Repeat all, it. <laughs> in addition to what the city manager presented already, yes. we want to add a, our alternate response pilot right. program uh, to the to that. We got it. Okay. Uh, 
Well, it's one of the four. It just had not been It really addressed. encompasses all of the four, to be honest. Yeah, but. yeah, all, all of the four. But it, it, it was the one, as, as he articulated, didn't have any, anything that had been uh, discussed about giving. But he wanted to specifically name the four to include that. All right. So, Council, I look to you for consensus on it. All right. Thank you. All right. Everybody. All right, Mr. Uh, so I did have a couple of questions um, yes, sir. for you, Mr. Jeff. So two things. One, um, the other municipalities I, I've spoken to, excluding Cumberland County, Wake and Durham and others, used the preliminary revaluation numbers as the budget numbers. We did not. So were preliminary numbers available that Cumberland County gave that we could have based this before we went through all this? I know it's a hard pivot from here, but we may not have had to even be raising taxes because they've passed budgets for this year based on preliminary numbers for next year. Mayor, we will um, definitely take a look at that. Um, and Jeff and, uh, and Kimberly, our budget officer, correct me as well. When we're projecting revenues, we, are, uh, we first look at what the tax collection rate was. And so we are blessed that Cumberland County does an excellent job for us under contract collecting taxes. And I think it's like 99 or 98 percent, something like that. About 99 and a half. And then you base that off of what your levy and, and other things are. It's the primary one. Then, of course, you've got the sales tax and other projections for revenues and stuff like that. But I've not heard of that in that form. Um, but we will definitely take a look at that for. Well, well all of us projected well, sales sure. tax. You don't get that when we I do think it. I, if I if I may, Mayor. Um, the reval that is go that the tax office is working on right now will not have an impact on our budget, meaning the new numbers won't be used for the tax levy until the 26 budget. So the 25 budget is at your current valuation, and we've talked. I, I, we've I know what we're doing. What I'm saying is, other jurisdictions didn't necessarily utilize that. Uh, was there a preliminary estimate that was available or is available that county commissioners have said preliminarily? This is what will be, because we do it with sales tax. When we pass this, we, are, we, we don't know what the last quarter sales tax are because it lags. So are you saying that there's no preliminary numbers that were available that could have been taken in consideration? There is not. And what I'm saying is the values that you will pay your next tax bill that we will get revenue off of will be the values that are currently in place, not your reval values. We have a statutory obligation to use those values as our estimate basis. When next year during this time as we're going through the budget, we will have the reval number, and that's when you will use that number as the basis for your revenue okay. estimate. So I understand, if I understand your question correctly, we're just a year early to the reval to be able to use those numbers because that's not the numbers the tax bills will be based on. Gotcha. So in other jurisdictions, the difference would have been there, county commissioners doing the revaluation a year earlier. Okay. That's correct. Gotcha. All right. And the last thing I uh, wanted to ask about, one of the other concerns that came up from the downtown uh, group was the tripling of the outdoor permit use. Now, I do agree it's probably dated with being $30, but to jump up to 100 I mean, because we want to encourage more. This is me being able to, or not me per se, but a, a, a shop being able to do something in, in front of their business and they apply for a permit. So we went from $30 to $100 in addition to the sale to the tax increase. So that, did, did they mention that to you? They called me about that. So how much revenue is, is at stake? Because if it's, if it's not substantial, maybe there's something the council can get some consideration. Because it can't generate a whole lot with additional fees. I mean. Do you know, Kimberly, off the top of your head? On the permit, the um, outdoor event permits, is that what you're referring to? Yeah. And it's on the fee schedule. Yeah, you got a fee schedule back here, but what does that equate to in dollars? But, Mayor, where we are is um, it is very similar to it was when we were y'all were looking at parking and I was not here. If you believe that 100 is too high, tripling, um, but doubling feels just about right, then give us that direction. But um, you have not... Um, I can't say that we've balanced a $320 million budget off of outdoor permits. That's not quite budget dust, but if no one applies for a permit next year, then that would have been lost revenue as well. But there is a number that we calculated based on historical events. But what I know number that was important feels to them. right? That's the point what, that was raised. Yes, yeah. sir. What number feels right? 
I mean, I can see taking it up to fifty or sixty dollars, but seventy-five. Yeah. Okay, we'll do seventy-five. Uh, I didn't say seventy. Oh. <laughs> this is real money for people. Man. It is. So, it is. so you know, I, I mean, I think sixty at the most with the other increases. You're talking four okay. percent tax. You're talking an uh, increase MSD tax, and so now you're talking fee increase. You know. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's still, it's still, it's still dollars. I, I'm, I'm not opposed to sixty. It was a hundred that, um, that was. You're the district rep, sir. You okay with that? Okay. All right. All right. That, that's all the questions I had. Um, so, council, any other items on the parking lot list that we needed to further discuss? Okay. All right. Mr. Yates, don't go too far. Sure. Okay. And so um, I think you had a question from Councilman Thompson. Uh, Councilman Thompson. I just know uh, we're ready for a motion, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'm trying to see how, what did you have under funding strategies and CIP? Edition? I've got, I'll, I'm here. I got this. What did you have under funding strategies and CIP? I just tell you, I'm, I'm here. All right. um, and so what would be helpful for us as well um, with council would be, as Councilman Thompson was trying to do, is you eat an elephant one bite at a time. So if we can get consensus from Council Mayor, if I could be so bold to say that based upon the clarifications that we did in wording, clarifications as to what we did as to uses and what we're going to bring back, that the parking lot is parked. Can you all tell us as we move on? All right. So System Manager can't make motions. I'll look for you all to make uh, a motion that we're okay with the exceptions, that there will be language specific to the discussion. All right. Councilman Mahondros. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so this left column here uh, with staff work in the Cumberland County Schools about the SROs, um, I believe Chief Brayton and a couple of his um, folks from PD had a meeting with the Sheriff's Office last uh, Thursday, I believe June 6th. Can we get well, a well, well, can we get a I, quick update on that? Yeah, yeah, that's I think that's coming, but you can they can answer your question, but I think um, let me dispose of this motion. Were you the first on that or the second? Councilman Neither. Second. Who was the first? I'll be the first one. All right. So it was the first by Councilman Thompson, seconded by Councilman Benevente to park the parking lot items with the exception of the changes. All right. This any is dis in the parking lot. In addition to the changes. Yeah. Any, any discussion of. You voting? Okay. Yes, sir. I don't mind it being park mayor. But, of course, and I know this is just a consensus, but before we move to finalize, I want to see it. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gotcha. And we also, we also, too, got clarity from you um, as part of the motion to reduce the um, outdoor events in downtown to 60. So that is, and, and again, Mayor, since I'm speaking, I wouldn't recognize, I apologize for that. But we had 13 items that were in front of you. You added a 14th, which was the outdoor. If, we're, if the motion and the second is locked, then we can talk about, if you'd like, the SROs next. Yeah, I was trying to close this item, yes. but I was just making sure we were clear on what we were closing. It's in the yes, yes, yeah, I, I got it. I mean. Yes, Mr. Mayor, but in addition to that, can Once we vote on that, can we make those changes so it could be seen, so we can oh, close oh, that's, that's what he's saying. That's okay. what he was <laughs> proposing. So, so they understand it's not going to get adopted until we gotcha. have the last look at it, right? Yes. All right, any, any other questions or concerns on this item? Yes. All right, Council, look to you for votes on that. Good job, Mr. Mayor. And again, this is for the 13, 14 items that are listed. 13 in the column and 14 was oh, we're the missing out, on the votes, outdoor yeah. permit. Oh. Council, we're better you're not voting for the stuff you've been talking about? Okay. Uh, who else are we missing? That's it. That's it. Okay. okay. And Mr. Mayor, um, before we move on to the funding strategies, this is probably a good time to talk about the SROs. Okay. And one of the reasons it's not listed as an item. Um, at the moment, we do not have, and Chief, um, if you want to come on up, and also Adam Lindsay, who's been working on this as well. At the moment, we do not have a formal request from the school system for us to provide this service. We have had multiple conversations, as I think some of you have as well, but we do not have a request for this as yet from the school system. Um, I think there is a meeting that is um, the mayor is helping to coordinate very soon on that. Um, and we um, do have some preliminary numbers. But I think that the question that was asked, and it um, would be a report out, uh, Chief, 
as to what your meeting was that you had with the sheriff's office and others last week? So the meeting last Thursday was about the, the sheriff's intentions to uh, relinquish responsibility for the SROs in the city limit schools for all jurisdictions, incorporated jurisdictions within Cumberland County. That's the city of Fayetteville, that's uh, town of Spring Lake, and the town of Hope Mills. Uh, so what does that mean for the city of Fayetteville and specifically the Fayetteville Police Department? Uh, all the things that the Sheriff's Department took responsibility for the past X amount of years as far as taking reports, responding to incidents, uh, taking law enforcement action to include arrests and things of that nature will now fall on the responsibility of the Fayetteville Police Department. So if there was a, an incident that occurred at a school, a B&E, if there was a fight, an assault, if there was a larceny, uh, those would be things that the Fayetteville Police Department now have to respond to and accept responsibility for taking that report and investigating those crimes. Uh, I, I can say this, that I, I truly understand that the sheriff is in a very similar position to us as far as staffing, and that I, I think that was taken in consideration when making this, but again, I don't want to speak on behalf of the sheriff for the totality of that. But the impact to us is, is that those crimes, those incidents, and that responsibility to respond and investigate would now fall with the Fayetteville Police Department. So what, what I've just placed in front of you are some very preliminary, very high level numbers, uh, rounded and estimates because we don't have a formal proposal. We can't say specifically what these are, but fact gathering and speaking with uh, the school and, and, and what we know from the, from the sheriff's budget and the county budget, we try to figure out what is this costing and, and at a very high level. And the, what you're looking at on the sheet, you can see the, the county, the, the, the school system uh, receives uh, $88,000 per officer. Uh, and so that's the number they, they'd like to use when it comes to a reimbursement. Uh, right now, they, they currently reimburse the, the sheriff's office of uh, cost for cost what the salary is of those, of those positions. But trying to bring this into Fayetteville, which is really the question is, uh, we wanted to say, well, what, what does it mean for Fayetteville if we were gonna have officers at Fayetteville City Schools uh, based on the model that exists today. Uh, and that model says there's one officer at a high school and one officer at a middle school, and then there's a, some shared officers across elementary schools. And again, looking at our numbers we, and with a couple of supervisors, we think that would work out to approximately 27 officers. And uh, if you look at the math then at 88,000 uh, per officer, that will come out to around $2.3 million that the school would fund. Looking at what it actually costs us for an officer based on the actions that you would, you would take with this adopted budget, uh, the cost per officer for us is about $100,000 when you add uh, all those benefits together. So if you were looking at, again, everything's negotiable, so I'm not trying to say this is what they've said in absolutes, but looking at that 88,000 versus 100,000, you'd be looking at a net uh, cost to the, to the citizens of Fayetteville of around 324,000 for salary and benefits alone. Now, that isn't the full cost of a person, right? So there's lots of other costs related to providing the service. And a real rough uh, estimate is it's around $20,000 per employee in the, in the Fayetteville Police Department. So if you added that on top, uh, you're looking at uh, approximately 800, a little almost, almost $900,000 in additional cost on top of what, again, the school system would prefer to reimburse based on the funding that they get. That's the school resource officer side. On, on the, the traffic control officers, uh, those are not funded by the school system currently. So the county has been bearing that cost. Uh, again, without having numbers in front of us, we know that's about a million dollars. I believe that's around a million dollars, and we estimate that would city of Fayetteville would be about half that cost given the number of schools that we have. Uh, but again, these are just high level numbers. Don't want anyone to get sort of stuck that this is an absolute, but those are coming at you what we think will be in the ballpark. All right. So council member Benavente and then council member Hale. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. No, you weren't. Um, I, Chief Brayden, I have a question. When there is a 911 call related to um, one of our campuses, elementary, middle, or high school, um, whether it's on a weekend or otherwise, the FPD responds, correct? 
No, not unless it's an emergency call. That let's say there's a BE at the high school. Yes, we would do an initial response to help catch, but it's the responsibility of the sheriff's office to investigate and carry that action any further. Is it almost as if the like you know a circle is drawn around a campus to say that it's, it's effectively county in that sense? Well, currently the GIS maps indicate that as county property. Yes. Okay. Um, the other question that I had. I'm trying to understand the, and this may be an Adam question. I think he turned away when I, as soon as I said that. Maybe you may know the answer, Chief. Um, the process is actually not that the school system is going to ask you to do something, but rather the city of Fayetteville is going to submit some kind of proposal to the county, correct? No. Uh, okay. It's a responsibility of the Cumberland County Schools to provide security within those schools. Currently, they're under contract with the sheriff's office, and as, as the sheriff's office uh, backs out of that contract or, or relinquishes responsibility for that contract for the upcoming school year, it's up to the Cumberland County Board of Education to determine who they want to contract with in the future. That's right. So what, just like when we put out a request for proposals, um, C uh, Assistant City Manager Lindsay, is it more akin to us having to submit a proposal to the board of uh, the Cumberland County School Board? And I, I think there is some clarification that needs to go there now as well. We're talking about for SRO responsibilities. Okay, if there's a 911 call there right now uh, or, or come July 1st, let's say there's a B&E of the school where the county would have gone after hours, taken the report and investigated that B&E, and it now falls squarely on the shoulders of the Fayetteville Police Department, no matter whether we have an SRO in that school or not. Well, right, and I, I, I guess my understanding was that was always the case, but if I could just get clarity from a city manager, please, the case is not that the school board is going to come asking us for anything. It's, in fact, the case that we have to put together a proposal to be considered. No. Okay. No, sir. They, um, they, uh, and they are, from um, what I've heard from um, one of their super assistant superintendents, I think it's consistent with the mayor's heard, and I think as well from Adam, um, they're looking at a variety of options to provide this. the school board is the school board is including um, um, uniformed um, security I'm not sure if it would probably not guns one way or other but we're anticipating having a high-level meeting with them I would anticipate as early as next week yeah I think I reached out to uh, dr. Conley and, the, and mr. chairman West to ask for that uh, meeting just to okay. so we can well, yeah, please clarify board. that because I've been reaching out to school board members to understand what their process is and they've basically made so. it clear that we would have to submit some kind of proposal to uh, them. Yeah, for I services. think if we do that, that is putting the, uh, Derek's words wagon before the horse mm -hmm. because you know, the state funds them to protect or have SROs there. Now, they may be going through the different options as to whether it's going to be municipal police or some other method. That's right. Yeah. So, but we would so then we would have to put forward some well, kind of... Well, if they say we're sending out an RFP for our SROs, then I guess that's a board decision as to whether we want to handle the schools within... And we would city. have to develop some kind of plan yeah. of what to propose. Mm -hmm. well, that's right. And so I guess the reason I'm asking that clarity question is that I think that's a very big conversation that we need to have first, is what exactly are we proposing we're going to offer service-wise? And if the only thing that we're going to offer is cops in classrooms... I think that's where we need to have a more comprehensive discussion about exactly what we're well, going to do before we enter into this. Um, and then the last question I think is maybe you know a, a Derek Thompson rhetorical question for everyone to consider. If the health department were to turn off tomorrow, if the uh, social services department were to turn off tomorrow, would we be so quick to want to clean up the mess of the county? Would we be so quick to say that we're going to just cover all that cost? Because I'm pretty sure we wouldn't. And so I'm really curious why... In this instance, we are so quick to throw away all the conventional wisdom that the county has their responsibilities and the city has our responsibilities. We should be telling those county commissioners they need to hire some rent -a cops at this point because that's what the private schools do. Village Baptist, Fable Christian, Fable Academy, they don't have cops in classrooms, and they're doing just fine. So I'm thinking that we need the county to spend their money to hire their security. And if it's going to be the city of Fayetteville that's taking that role, it's going to come with a lot more strings than just cops in classrooms. Because we all have recognized that that's not what actually makes things safer. 
Uh, all right. Thank you, Councilmember Benavente. I think the difference with the Health Department and Social Service, those are county, there's a state mandated services for them. Yeah, n not the sheriff's department. Uh, the, the sheriff doesn't have to, by statute, guard the schools. It was just a contractual arrangement. Uh huh? In the county, but you have municipalities that have law enforcement. But it's still within the municipality. But you know, s semantics. At the end of the day, I, I mean, I, I we got. I think your point is your, your point has been made. Um, but I think it's a little difference with 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 it. But uh, we'll go to. Councilmember here and then Hondros. So with all of this conversation that's been blown around, our number one is waiting to receive a response. Someone to ask. Nobody's asking. We're doing asked a lot of him. talking now, but okay. So we're, we're waiting to hear whatever. Okay. But if I could, let me just clarity just for me on this. If it's a possible of 27 officers needed and with all of their uh, benefit package as you stated it's at a hundred K per officer and they normally fund 88 K for each individual right then that additional 20 that either is going to be negotiated or I mean and I know we're putting this Correct. ahead. I'm just, I'm we're, just we're, asking. No, yes, it's a, everything's no. negotiable because we, yes, everything's negotiable. I'm just, I was trying to establish sort of where they are and, and, and at a very okay. just this discussion level, but this is not a formal request or but until number. we get the request, we just talk it. Okay. Uh, to be a little more clear on that, uh, the, the, the Cumberland County School Board is reimbursed by the state, funded to the tune of $88,000 for every high school and half that, $44,000 for every middle school. So it's, it's not incorporated across the board. If we have a school, you're gonna get $88,000. It depends on the, the, the type of school, a high school or a middle school, and it's fully funded to 88 for a high school and 44, I believe, for a middle school. And not at all for the crossing guards. No. Okay. Thank you. All right, Council Member Hondros. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and Chief, thank you for the report and uh, Mr. Lindsay for this preliminary information. So based on this, as my colleagues have already pointed out, so complete with the benefit package, pay package, and the equipment, we're looking at 120 k per officer, per SRO, and without any additional funding from Cumberland County Schools, we're looking to get reimbursed as best as we know right now, 88 k So we're talking 32 k that we would have to fund if all things being equal, if they made the request, if these numbers were accurate, that's what we would be funding, correct? Potentially. Potentially. So thank you. That's good preliminary information. So the reason I asked these questions, it wasn't, I'm not necessarily advocating that we go in the SRO business, and I'm not saying we shouldn't consider it if we were formally asked. And Chief, help me out here. I think it's uh, CAD. In my world, that's computer-aided uh, design, so that's, that's blueprints are now computer-aided. But I think in your world, it's computer-aided dispatch. Is that right? That's correct. So the sheriff has total unilateral control over that, correct? In so, other words, who responds to what where within his county? So CAD is the operating system that we utilize to dispatch, and, and he has the, the primary server. I think, and Lisa, correct me if I'm wrong, we operate from a replicator server that is attached to the county's CAD. So based on that, we're able to, to, to see those calls that come in. And I, I think the direction, and if I'm presuming right now, you're asking, you know, what is city, what is county, and how are those dispatched? Correct. So, so currently, right now, because they have the contract with Cumberland County Schools, uh, and the Cumberland County Schools are, are, are deeded and owned by the school board. Mm -hmm. uh, technically, the, 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 the assumption right now is, is that those aren't Cumberland County properties. Okay, and, and being that, even though in GIS, when we look at our mapping, currently they are grayed out when we look at the city map as county properties. Uh, they've indicated that they're going to change that to get into what they believe is it's incorporated into the city. And again, no matter whether we choose to provide SRO 
activities within the school. We are still responsible for any incidents, crimes, and, and other things that happen within those. That, based that's on the that. point, Chief. And, and you know, talking about CAD may have been the wrong way to ask the question. My point is, up until June 30 or July 1, um, for the last 10 plus 20 year, however long it's been, the sheriff has been. Um, the sheriff's office has been responding to, as, as my colleague asked the question, Correct. to calls on school property, not only during school hours, but even after hours. Correct. We were invited guests whenever we would go and attend if a function on the school. If they needed additional support, backup, they would call and see if you all had units available. And naturally, if it's an emergency, such as a, a, an assault, a serious assault, a shooting, or something of that nature, we would automatically respond. Correct. But starting July 1, if, if my understanding is correct, Starting July 1, FPD is going to be answering all those calls within the incorporated city limits of Fayetteville. Correct. Any call that comes in from a Cumberland County school will be routed to our 911 center for dispatch by the Fayetteville Police Department. Whether we get in the SRO business or not. So Whether if we, we decide to not go into SRO, that's still taking place. Correct. So this is what I want myself to understand and my colleagues is that this is going to have a budgetary implication and man hour implication whether we get in the SRO business or not, correct? And a crime. You know. And crime. So it, I was getting there. So in the next quarter or two, once school is in and we see your quarterly crime report and the crime's up 25 or 40 percent because all these fights and incidents at school are now going to be on the report, which right now is on somebody else's report. And I would hope it's not that high, but, but Whatever yes, there was, well, you should see I just that, want everybody that there's going to add that. to those numbers. Thank you, sir. So, so just to be clear on his question, so if there's an assault that takes place at Cumberland County School, or God forbid somebody gets shot, even though it's within the municipal limits, that doesn't count on your crime stats as not, a shooting? Not until July 1st. After July 1st, when, when they, they officially pull back from the, the, the Cumberland County Schools, any incident that occurs on that school property will go towards the numbers that I present to council on a quarterly basis. Okay. All right. All right, Council Member, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Jens. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, um, just two things. My thoughts on this, um, you know, five years ago, you know, we were pushing for this. We thought it was a great idea. Um, I still don't think it's a bad idea, but I'm just concerned about capacity, and I just don't see that we're going to have it. But the one thing, and, and I think that, we're asking to be to going we're going to a party that we haven't been invited to so i really want to see what the school board i mean that is and underneath their roof it is their responsibility i feel that they need to come to us and tell us what they need and what they want but what i cannot agree with is that we have our law enforcement officers being crossing guards I just, I, I, there has to be, there just should not even be a conversation in that. To me, I think there's a lot of other avenues for crossing guards. So in the, in the system and Cumberland County Schools, as many, I don't know if many of you know, that uh, former Major Young that was a major with the Fayetteville Police Department is now Director of Safety for Cumberland County Schools. So I have had some conversations, okay? They realize that we don't have the capacity to fill 40-something SRO positions within the city of Fayetteville. Uh, their, their hope is is that we can get to an agreement down the road where the city of Fayetteville would, would, would be interested in speaking about how do we make that happen a, a, over a multi-year implementation. But no, there's, there, there's nothing. That, I would not send officers out to be the crossing guards for, for the schools. And, and that's one of the discussions they had is I've had with them is what are you going to do come August 15th, whenever school starts back, in reference to the crossing guards? And, and they're looking to possible solutions to many of those, those questions. All right. Thank you. Um, I think you picked up most of, most of my questions. So this estimate that you have here, the 27, did it include elementary schools within the city limits? That does at the time, yes. But right now, the way they do it, uh, the SROs share elementary schools. Right? That, that's imagine there. So as this well. is the worst case scenario if you put a uniformed person at every high school, middle school, elementary school. No, sir. It, the elementary school is, a, is using the same model they do now, which is a shared elementary school officer. But to will note this, right now the elementary schools do not have even county sheriff deputies Correct. at them. Even but does contract. your number factor that in? 
I just said if we if we did fund if, if we did st staff them there the, the school has budgeted it it just hasn't been activated by the sheriff's office probably for staffing reasons but they they do not have officers there but it is in the county's budget so and let I me re-ask it again does this 27 include elementary schools or it does not it does okay so all right and then the other thing is the difference that you're showing um you're estimating our cost. I see you've got it at the county pay raise 20 per hour. Are you estimating that at, at what number per hour? Is it at what they charge off duty when you get one of the FPD guys is $40, $50 an hour when you get a sheriff is 20 is it? Yeah. Is that the estimate you use? This is the number the school uh, system provided to me that they pay, that, that they know that the sheriff's office pays $20 per hour for those, those people that, that do the traffic. Control. Oh, this is for specifically for traffic. Yeah, then that's an hourly. Right. And then, uh, Chief, can you speak to about the crossing guards? There were a certain number of crossing guards that worked for the county that were already trained. This would not be taking your uniform guys and having them direct kids across the street necessarily unless there was some shortage. But you have a, a already established crossing guard that now just is under the sheriff's office that theoretically would be able to, those employees would be able to move to. Uh, city if that were it right? so my recommendation would be that that the county employ those instead of us taking that on as a hiring process uh, but but no I have there's nothing that that I've considered as far as taking on and hiring those individuals but yes there are part-time employees their average compensation is about twenty dollars an hour and they work anywhere from two to six hours a day during the school in session all right that's it. Uh, Councilmember Benavente. Yeah, I, I just feel like we're, we're skipping past a really fundamental question. If the sheriff assumed that, you know, all hell was going to break loose the second that he left, I don't think he would have done this. I want um, uh, our, our, our staff to look into what sort of um, inc incidents are really happening in our schools. What are we really budgeting for? Because I question how necessary it is to actually have law enforcement in the schools, especially when you consider, again, plenty of schools that are private here in this area do just fine with zero law enforcement there. The mall functions with zero law enforcement there. The kids are there all the time. If and when an incident occurs that is dangerous, yeah. weapons involved or whatever, you pick up the phone, you call 911 like you do anywhere else. We're, we're gonna have a conversation about what we're gonna propose, but there's gonna be some education amongst, I think, the city council about the school to prison pipeline, what that means, and when you consider our quarterly stats, the way we stop and search people, the way we use force against one group of people, and to say that we're going to do a one-for-one -one exchange and putting those officers in front of our children is a huge question mark that no one here should just assume has already been answered. There are a lot of ways to keep students safe that don't also prime them for getting involved with the criminal justice system because we know we disproportionately arrest, suspend, and expel our black students. So we're not going to get into that game here. Council Member, you can laugh about it, Council Can, Member Hare, Can, but it's reality. Can, Council Member, let's, let's keep this on the higher level, all right? This I, is, I understand you're talking about disrespectful them. to laugh about that. Well, well, I think once you injected that, that last part, yeah, but, that, but listen, this is the thing. A law enforcement officer's presence does not necessarily mean somebody's getting arrested. They're there to keep the peace, mainly. If there's an incident, then they respond to the incident. So, you know, there's got to be an exception to what you said, because just because one of Chief Brayden guys comes to a school don't mean that you're getting ready to run the rest of black students up. So I think that was the part to be in. And I know that's what you really believe. But what I'm saying is that's not the reality. I, it was actually a positive relationship. Right. Well, well. And Look, there, uh, we can debate that at another time. This is a budget meeting, I, and I think just to keep us on task, I, I think that uh, this was a briefing that the manager and the PD had to give us some, the latest on the sheriff uh, SRO situation. So uh, with that, council, let's move to uh, the other items. Mr. Manager, what were the other Yes, sir. I, I, I want to just, uh, again, close out as you did. The reason we brought this is because there's been a lot of community conversation, questions from council. Um, if there is a um, request that comes from the school system, it would also, as you could see from the report, um, would come with revenues. And it would also be a negotiated contract that the school system would make with the um, 
with the city of Fayetteville if the council chooses to enter into such an agreement. Um, I bring that again to you to say that um, if you were ready or when you're ready to adopt a budget, if we don't have an agreement presented to us or with the school system, that doesn't preclude you from adopting your budget. It would be a fee for service that we could enter into after your mainline budget is adopted. I think this is consistent with that, uh, what Hope Mills did and possibly with what Spring Lake may be asked to do as well because we just simply don't have the numbers. Um, but with that, Mayor, um, looking again at the um, PowerPoint presentation that you had, we've covered and locked in the PowerPoint. I think we've also answered the questions to the best we can for what we know about the school resource officers and crossing guards. Um, part of the efficiencies that we had talked about was on the next slide, which talks about capital projects for closure. And these are some projects where we are, well, we're coming back to council to close these projects out. And, um, uh, and if you have any questions on those, we'd be happy to go through those. But this is essentially how we were able to um, find the additional funds to. Because uh, of my shovel. Um, it was, I had an epiphany late at night, uh, and I re remarked on, remembered on something that the mayor had mentioned in passing to me, and I, on a hunch, decided I would get up in the middle of the night, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, mayor, okay. All right. He's never so, one to say I told you so, and I'm, I'm be too much of a gentleman to say I told him to. Sure. Okay, so right. looking at that capital project. Uh, well, Mr. Um, Hewitt, um, before you go back to this, uh, mm -hmm. I've got uh, Councilman Green and one or two others. others had a hard stop on. Yeah. Was there something you needed for the CFO situation for the financing this week? Um, no, no um, uh, Council, um, as um, I mentioned to you in, in, uh, previously, um, we are I'm moving to appoint Jeff Yates as interim chief financial officer. Um, have had um, conversations um, with the city attorney and looked at the city's charters within my authority and my requirement to do so. We will be coming back to council for your um, approval to protect the city by issuing a the required, I think, million dollar bond that is there to protect the city for whoever is named as a CFO for the city. And um, we'll be doing that hopefully at your next consent agenda item. Um, but thank you, Mayor, for that. And again, as always, if you have any questions, um, uh, my, please let me know. Um, and looking at trying to be respectful of the time that I think everybody has to go, that we, we've handed out, I think, a revised parking lot. Is that what we have here, Jeff? Yes, sir. What you have in front of you are the changes. Yes. So. You, um, this is uh, just real quick on item four. Uh, I'm sorry, on item five, we added Johnson Street to the link to that um, identifier, and we added on item three um, a signage statement. And then on item 14 is the change in the fee. Um, we will ex examine that, but it'll it'll more than likely be de minimis, so we'll um, we don't have an exact number. So, how much? Very point. Okay, so we're not concerned about the impact of the balancing the budget on that number. A uh, hundred dollars? You're talking about to go from thirty-five dollars a permit to? I mean, from. Okay. Well, I don't think that's going to cause the budget to be thrown. No, off. I think that is also reflected the fact that COVID was may have been a real thing, and we're still, but it okay. was a minimum. All right. Well. That, that meant a lot to them for them it to does. bring it up. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Thank you all for bringing it up. Um, just looking as well, again, capital project closures, the funding strategy at a high level on this um, next chart um, uh, really, again, goes into a different angle and view of how we were able to rebalance the budget and reduce the tax recommended tax rate from five cents to four. And again, you see the parking lot items at the very bottom. And then we are, uh, there are no questions on that, and um, we can talk about the uh, CIP projects for consideration. Jeffrey. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, sorry. It's, it's not showing. Yeah. It, it doesn't go up on us. Um, go All right, Council Member Heron and Hondra. No, my, my. No, that's old. Okay. I think. Council Member Hondra. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Um, so with all due respect to Dr. Hare, on item five, when did we agree on the earmarking that for Johnson Street? Was it Bonnie Doon? It was on the parking lot of Johnson Street for water sewer. Then it was, when but it came back today, it, it was infrastructure. Right. And so... So when did we agree to switch it back? Well, that's, what, that's why we asked about the parking lot. There was some specificity, just like Councilmember Benavente is about adding a pillar, that we recapped that two or three times. It was their concern. Sir, and my concern is you got other areas of town that have similar issues, particularly in 6, 7, and 8 with the annexation. So how can we pick one district or one area over well, another? Well, I think when this was submitted, this was about revitalizing an area that... that has been overlooked. You cannot compare what's going on in Westfield to Bonnie Doon being in the city for 70 years looking the way it looks. Okay, And, and, and I'm and okay because so, across the right. street and on so Mike Street's I, in my district. You I'm know, just saying. But, but when he brought this up, you know, you, certainly like you did, it was, there was 250 that was in the budget for this a couple of budget years ago. He asked to put it back and it's been on the parking lot ever since. So today we were cleaning it up. So I mean, I don't think one impacts whatever we're doing to any of the other areas. What's your, what's your concern on there? that we're giving preferential treatment to one community over another. Well, we always target, because we don't have the money to do them all at the same time. There's corridor improvements. Okay, that I'll leave it alone. If, if we, I didn't realize that was part of the motion to accept the parking lot, but if it was, then I stand corrected. Okay. <laughs> and it, it was to make those changes that we reiterated. Now, now's the time to clean it up. This is consensus today. It put, it put the language, they captured the language of our discussion on here. So if it's not right, or we don't agree with it, now's the time. Yeah. Council Member uh, Banks McLaughlin and Benavente. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, if we're going to vote, I would like to uh, vote on that for up and down because that was one of the things I brought up um, back, I want to say, in 2019 with West Fedville with the, the sewage connection. Those individuals um, couldn't afford paying for that connection fee. And still to this day, that's something that they're fighting for. So I will not be supporting it. Okay. And, and again, the reason it was moved from water and sewer specifically, okay, the, the, the charter gives specific direction to phase five annexation. Okay. It, it tells PwC, you're going to do this for these annexed areas to provide it. Now, this, it was changed from water sewer so there would not be any confusion that it was infrastructure. It, this is an area that we've targeted for redevelopment. It's a half a mile from Amazon. Mm -hmm. We're housing, and it's, and it's been underserved. It doesn't even have curbs and gutters. So to call it infrastructure doesn't necessarily mean it's water and sewer. I think we're looking at one takes the place of the other. Infrastructure is why they cleaned it up with that. But there's a lot of areas that have It is. Uh, are, you, are you, for one moment, comparing... What's been invested in Bonnie Doon to any of these other areas you're talking about? Well, not necessarily, but this isn't Bonnie Doon. This is Johnson Street specifically. So Johnson, well, I'm Bonnie okay Doon with is Bonnie both Doon. Sides Rome, both sides of Brack Boulevard. Bonnie Doon proper. But what I'm saying is there not, is no comparison that can be made. I'm about, not saying that okay. Bonnie Doon hadn't been neglected, but there's other areas in the city, including Merkson Road, that, that and, in and, some and, and we had to start out with sewer. a targeted approach. I, I, I agree. As I long mean, as we all know what we're voting on, that's fine. Yeah. I think, <laughs> all right, I mean, we can do whatever the board's consensus is. Councilman Benavente. Thank you. I think uh, City Manager Hewitt may have assumed my question was about to clarify something for me. Yes, sir, um, in our haste to try to get this down to reflect um, the changes you made when you locked the parking lot um, was um, we forgot to put off the co-response, co alternative response. response on item four. And um, so... Um, that is a clarification that's needed there, but again, I don't believe, Mayor, that the, the council was ready to vote on this tonight. You wanted to see it all. Um, well, I think I didn't know they were going to go print it off and come back, but it doesn't have your correspond the correspond language. Uh, alternate response language. So yes, I mean, as long as you know the the clerk or the uh, city manager can just jot it in, I'm satisfied. Um, but you know, I certainly I, I'm hearing what Councilmember Banks McLaughlin articulated. I certainly would love to hear from other council members um, who have concerns about you know. Um, Item number five, um, I, th I think those are relevant concerns that you know we should address now, just sure. as Dino said, so that we can go ahead and vote. All right, Councilman Davis. Yes, thank you, Ms. Mayor. Um, so 
there are some items that did not make this um, parking lot list, and I see that we will have them on the CIP sheets. What is the expected time to get those sheets? Should be included in whatever budget we adopt. The, do you have the sheets, Adam? Okay. The, have, the updated sheets? The updated sheets. So what I've included in your presentation is the appropriation for those, and I think Councilman right. Fire Station um, 16 Playground, the 200000 these would be the additional CIP projects that would be added in um, to the capital program. So there's the MacArthur Sports Complex funding, um, the connectivity project support, which is the uh, ingress-egress project it's crazy. at 375 over two years, which is cash funded. Fleet Operations Center Planning and Development, that is to develop a study and a plan to determine what our next steps are with our fleet facility, the playground, and then a fast center build out, which is to provide office space, additional office space that the city is in need of um, as we go forward. The intent would be if you were to adopt these projects, we will work on a um, funding strategy because we know some of these will be debt and some of them need a little more refinement. None of these will have a budgetary impact other than the capital side in 2025 so we'll bring back a, a funding strategy and a funding plan for these as we progress but we wanted to get these on the record knowing your interest and knowing other council members interests and being sure that they're locked in and that they're there and we feel like that this will do that thank you sir all right council member Thompson. Well, thank you mr mayor i want to make sure i'm clear about the Johnson Street project. We're not talking about not charging them hookup fees or assessment fees when we put in this infrastructure. No. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was clear. It was infrastructure improvement for affordable housing, which is in every priority we have, and you opened it up so it's not just water and sewer. They've got to pay PwC for this water and sewer taps on there. I got you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Banks from Glove. No, for, for State that again, because that's just like, again, in District 8, they're right now, they were, well, years ago, they were annexed. So they didn't have the opportunity to um, receive assistance or, or help connect it. And currently, right now, that's what they're in the process of doing. And again, this is something I brought to back to council years ago, and the conversation was, Oh, that's not the city. That's not that's not something that we do as far as the infrastructure. So I do have a problem with um, us identifying the area. It's one thing to say let's set some some money aside to a specific certain a, a certain side of of a town who needs um, uh, a area that needs improvement, but to just specifically well, identify a area as if it's something that maybe we don't know that's something uh, about the no, no, no. I, I think you're mixing up two things. I'm glad you brought well, that kind up. Of ex, um, so, so there are no sewer trunk lines on the street in West Fayetteville. That's what PwC is doing is running the trunk lines to a area. The individual like people still have to hook up to it. That's not true. That no, is true. That's how zone, the, the sewer stops at Look Mount the, Olive Church. The well, it stops at Mount Olive. They've got a house down there where they were doing uh, feeding the homeless that they had to close because it, it had a septic tank. Mm -hmm. There's septic tanks up and down Johnson mm -hmm. Street. The individual will still have to pay whatever they pay. I think what you were asking is, as PwC runs this, we approve projects every quarter with PwC saying, Project number 13, 33, 34, 35, mm -hmm. they're running the trunk line. The individual is still has to pay the fee to hook it up to it. So, so this it, is my first time this hearing is not it come to fee. council ahead of time. Like, why are, we, why are we talking about this conversation and they're not even in a process of even or identify the area to build? Well, well. I don't, I don't think it's about building. You've got houses and mobile home parks that we've demoed, and there's been a targeted movement of tearing down structures over there, and there are, are septic tanks on that road in a place that's been in the city for 60 and 70 years. So this is district, you know, but I'm saying what's right is right. The trunk lines are being ran to West Fayetteville. Everybody's responsible for hooking up to the water and sewer. This is not paying or taking that away. Mount Olive Church, I go to Mount Olive. Okay, well, I mean, you can raise your eyebrows if you want to. It's, it, look, they give, it, I have nothing out of it, but what's, what's, what's fair about it, they had a situation, and you can verify this, where they had a food closet that was, that was told by code enforcement that they had to stop uh, serving food, and they had to give it in cans because there's a septic tank on the premises. 
and it was going to cost the church $40,000 to do a free service because there's sewer here and there's sewer at the backside, but not in the middle. That's why that area hadn't been developed, you know, and so as you talk about, it's not a, a, a one or the other. It's a $250,000 is not going to go a long way, period. I mean, it doesn't take anybody's personal responsibility away. But a church shouldn't have to run a trunk line down a road that's been in the city for 60 years because of anything like that. And so I think why DJ brought this up is if you ever want that community to look better, it's going to have to have the infrastructure available. And that's what this was about. And it wasn't, I think it got twisted when it became water sewer, so I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. Because what you said was you were trying to, to end the connection fees where somebody's got to pay the $5,000 to hook up so, to it. Well, more, more than that. Yeah, or whatever it was. But th this was and two was different things. So I, I appreciate you bringing that up, but that's what, that's what that was about. But Councilman Mahondros. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So who extends the water and sewer you're talking about? The mains? PwC The city or the PwC? Or, or the contractor. So what's the 250000 for? Number one, if we're extending a water or sewer main, you're going to get about five feet for $250,000. But we don't do that anyway. The city doesn't do it anyway. The, the PwC does it. So that's why I don't understand so, so the whole ask. If, I don't understand if this the whole was in here out. like this, if, if you had, a, a, let's say, a, a, a community or Mount Olive Church that has a parcel of land mm -hmm. that they wanted to, to do something with or, or somewhere where these blue apartments were or what have you, the developer has his portion of it, but he's got to get the infrastructure there. So if there were grants or anything to incentivize that, we do, we do it in other which, areas. Which we have grants through ECD. Not for that. Yeah, I thought we did. All right. Branson Street, yeah. They did it on Haymont. You had something similar to done on Haymont uh, for, the, for your Realtors Association, guys. No, you were on council. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. Uh. But, but, but they... But it was an area that needed to be built up. Oh, okay. Council Member here. And, and thanks, Mayor. I, I, I think you did very well in trying in, in explaining what I've been saying. But, you know, this is what's so wild about this item uh, that we'll seem to be digging in it. So uh, for whatever the reasons are, when we were doing... Um, taking stickers and placing stickers on our boards, uh, some before this council and some with this council right here at um, the last rec center that we went. This item back then and now received enough of blue or yellow bullets for, for it to be a, a targeted item and now that and and council has heard me discuss infrastructure to support uh hopefully affordable housing which was uh, uh was a priority from our our opera funding in this location for a number of years and now for some reason this $250 to support the infrastructure in that area uh, is receiving this, you know, this uh, dialogue. I'm just kind of surprised that we're here because you're not hearing it for the first time this budget season. Council Member Hondros. So I don't disagree with that. The way it got all those dots on that strategic planning retreat is because we had it for a targeted area. It wasn't getting the support. Then we made it for the whole city, and then it got the support. That's the problem is the targeting the area. You won't get a council member on this board, any future board, or the history of the city that's more for housing, affordable, and otherwise, and infrastructure than I am. So I'm for all of it, but we can't choose one area over the other. That's all. Well, Councilmember McNair. Yes, I don't, I don't think I'm uh, clear with um, where this money is um, really going because we keep going back and forth, mm -hmm. um, not stating what it's going to be used for specifically. So, a as they said before, if if you it was on there as water and sewer, 
-hmm. Okay. You may have someone who wants to kingdom development or, or one of these other folks may want to do an affordable housing development over there that may want uh, an infrastructure grant to do something. Okay. The way that it's listed now, it's, it allows that in a targeted vicinity. If it doesn't want to be Johnson Street, it, needs, it could say Bonnie Doon, whatever. But it, it is infrastructure, which is water, sewer, sidewalks, or something like that is what, so is what it is. So this is a just-in-case. Well, it's an allocation to try to incentivize building. Like, we can say that we don't target. That's all we do is target because you don't have enough resources to do everything at the same time. You can't make up decades of inequalities of resources being distributed by two or three years worth of targets. Okay. So, you know, council member, I love you, right? But District 9 has received far more investment than this area, by far. And it's un unequivocally, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but at the end of the day, you know, we try to do what we can with what we have. So it's on, the, it's on here for $250,000 for infrastructure uh, improvements to an area, which is one of the five pillars, guys. We didn't even go back on our list from January. Okay. and vet this parking lot to see if it fit into the five buckets that we established, so, right? So Johnson Street is like one well, of the top priorities? Well, it, it doesn't have to say Johnson Street. This oh, is okay. DJ's request. I, I think his, his goal is the Bonnie Doon area. Now, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. says Johnson Street. I, I think everybody's trying to figure out how you got first priority. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Well, how, however, you know, yeah, whatever I'm, 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 direction y'all give is what it, we'll but, follow. Um, but how he got first priority is that you put it on the parking lot. He did. He's yeah. been saying it consistently. But uh, yeah. I'll go to Council Member Banks McLaughlin and Davis, and then we'll see if we can get some resolution to it. Um, I would just say I have no problem funding an area that's um, in need of infrastructure. However, I do not feel comfortable just specifically saying Johnson Street. Road. Okay. So I think that that, ne that need to be changed because that's – Community area something. Okay. All right, Council Member Davis. Yes, sir. I thought there was a motion that was made, but it wasn't seconded yet. So, is there a motion? Who who made a motion? I think. Were you making a motion for up and down? I had vote? a motion already out there for the John. He, he, he didn't. Issue. But we, oh, we were getting there. We were trying to get all the. Okay. Specifics. Well, I was going to say, um, I'll make a motion to uh, to approve the two hundred fifty thousand. Um, for um, the Bonnie Dome area. All right. There's a motion by Councilman Banks McLaughlin. I'm sure you second it. All right. There's a second by Councilman Heron in the discussion. Councilman Minear. So, so, is that specifically for Bonnie Dome that you're saying? The, she, she took the Johnson Street off. Oh, oh, got you. And she just said the Bonnie Dome area. Oh, okay, I got you. Got you. Okay. Any other Councilman Benevente? Y'all really good with this? Okay. I mean, uh, the, 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 the concern is always when it comes to our budgets is are we doing what's best for the city overall, especially in consideration of the many areas of need, or are we doing the patronage politics? And I think that's a relevant question on this matter, but it <laughs> seems as though we're not really going to confront that today, so I guess we'll just vote. It's been here since we started this conversation. I think it was on there to be nice. I didn't think that we were I'm talking about your item. It's all patronage politics. I mean, you're advocating for what you that, passion. That's, that's 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 all right. All right. So, Council, any more questions? Look to you for you for votes. All right. Who, who are we missing, Jeff? No, we're missing. So, uh, we got it. Yeah, okay. Look at y'all. All right. Job. All right. Good job, Council. Hard work. It's Good tough. Job. I think you all did it. Great job. What do you, What do you else you need from us? No, I think um, with that work, what we'll do is we will prepare this. We will attach the relevant CIP items. We'll repackage it as an item. We'll get it out to you, you as soon good. as possible. Um, and. Um, if this is locked and loaded, we do have some cleanup work we have to do, such as starting to set up accounts for July 1st. Uh, we'll just some housekeeping stuff we'll work on, but it will not be official until top council takes action. And we're looking at on the 24th, Pamela? 
Is that the 24th of this month? Yes. Um, with that, let, can we all sell a hand because the budget is done. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, motion to adjourn, Council. Uh, you have something? No, no, no. We got oh, hold, hold on, hold on, Council. Yeah, uh, Councilman Thompson. You voted for tax raises. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to be clear to uh, uh, the listening audience about the 0.4% Avalon tax rate increase, uh, that 90, probably 96% of it is for the increase in our first responders. So when we go out there and, and, and tell our constituents why, hopefully they will understand that our first responders were in desperate need of uh, these additional funds, not only for recruitment, but for retention, Mr. Mayor. So I thank you. Uh, I appreciate that, Councilman Thompson. And Councilmember Benevente, it's all public safety because there's $2.3 million in here New for money. public safety. New money. In addition to paying our first responders. Cash. So you all deserve a hand for closing that, that gap. It's not an either or, it's an and. So thank you. All right. Motion to adjourn? All right.